The first Kingsman film is probably one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. I've seen it at least a dozen times, and it's just as entertaining every time I watch it. So you can probably understand why I was pretty hyped for the sequel, to say the least. In fact, it was my most anticipated film of the year back in January. So did it live up to that? Let's talk about it. And as usual, I'll first go non-spoilers with this, and then later on I'll talk spoilers. But I will say, if you want to go into this completely fresh, maybe just watch this review after you've seen the film. Cause even in this non-spoiler part, I might get into some vague plot points that a super fan might not want to know. I'll warn you before I say anything somewhat important to the plot though. So this movie has received quite a critical beating in recent weeks, and is that deserved? Uh, somewhat. I don't think it's 50% on Rotten Tomatoes bad, but it certainly was a bit of a disappointment to me. And trust me, I went into this really wanting to love it. I will say, if this was just a standalone film that came out, not a masterpiece, but still pretty cool. But because it's following up such a phenomenal first film, it really didn't live up to that. First though, let's talk positive. The cast is, for the most part, pretty good. Taron Edgerton is still fantastic as Eggsy. He makes some not super great lines sound really natural. He's funny, he's charming, great all around. Colin Firth is Harry, I wasn't a huge fan of some of the things they did with that character, but overall, the performance is still amazing, one of the best in the film. Mark Strong is still great as Merlin, and the statesmen all around were pretty solid. A lot of them don't get a ton to do, but Pedro Pascal as Agent Whiskey in particular is amazing. Absolutely loved him in this, one of my favorite parts, easily. Now, even though I think a lot of people might disagree with me, I'm just gonna say it. I did not like Julianne Moore at all as the villain. She's a great actress, but this villain was just so not intimidating in the slightest. Or even funny. Sam Jackson the first film wasn't exactly intimidating, but at least he had some hilarious moments. And he was super memorable. Here they tried to make her stack up to that, and it just didn't work for me. And Elton John is in this for some reason, and I've heard some people say he totally stole the show, and I respectfully disagree. When he first showed up, I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. But then the jokes about him went on for just a bit too long. Like, it felt like the movie kept saying, look, we got Elton John to dress funny and do silly things. Isn't that amazing? And sure, it's funny at first, but in my opinion, it dragged on for a bit too long. Anyway, let's get back on track. This was supposed to be the positives. On the whole, I can say I did like the movie. Like, it's certainly watchable, I was entertained by pretty much all of it. The characters' evolutions from the first film didn't feel super forced, and because I love these characters, like Eggsy, that was nice to see. I also appreciate how this tried to take this in a somewhat different direction, for the most part, and didn't just do the exact same plot again. There are some genuinely great moments in here, some that are honestly hilarious, and some that are honestly kind of emotional. Not tear-jerking or anything, but especially the way they try to flesh out Harry's character, I actually really liked. Especially a scene where him and Eggsy share a drink. You'll know it when you see it. The music from The First Kingsman is one of my favorite movie soundtracks ever. I love it so much, and I've listened to it a lot since the film came out. And here, it's still pretty awesome. The direction by Matthew Vaughn is great, and easily the best thing this film has going for it is the action. Matthew Vaughn obviously does action really well, and this is no exception. Some stuff is a little hard to follow sometimes, but most of this is amazing. Especially the bar fight, the Harry and Eggsy team up, and Pedro Pascal having a gunfight in the snow. That last one was superb. It really felt like something that genuinely stacked up to the first film. Okay, so that's what I liked. Now for everything else. Really, the main thing that I genuinely kind of hated in this film is a spoiler, so I'll get to that later. But there's something towards the start of this film that's so abrupt and so weirdly handled, and I really just don't understand it. Again, more on that later. Now, while the first movie was a super ridiculous spy film, especially towards the start, it actually had some heart to it. This one, besides those one or two scenes, just feels kinda empty in terms of emotion. It tries a couple times, but they don't always hit. The film's also not super well paced, it's kinda too long. A lot of this could have been cut down. They clearly had ideas for tons of stuff that they wanted to show in this, but jamming it all in there makes the final product feel kind of rushed and exhausting. It also falls into that movie sequel trap of just kind of being a best of reel from the first film. Like there's a lot of, oh, remember this scene from the first movie? Remember this joke? That was funny, right? Well, here it is again. I'm all for references. I love the first one too, but there were just a few too many. Also, at some points, the movie seemed to try to kind of one-up the first film. Like, hey, you thought that was nuts? We can get even crazier. But it never really worked. In a lot of cases, it just ended up feeling kind of gross. And not really in the way I think the movie intended. Not like, ah, oh, gross, that guy got ground into chunks of meat. 
like we're part of the appeal. It's just how nasty it is. In this, it's just like not pleasant to watch, and I wouldn't want to show this to anyone. Also, there's that sex scene, which we'll get into in spoilers. Also, even for something as ridiculous as Kingsman, it just gets too stupid at one point. Something involving the president, that's all I'll say. Now, very minor spoiler warning here, I won't reveal anything that happens, and what I'm going to talk about now is in a lot of the trailers or TV spots, but if you really don't want to have any knowledge of this going in, click to this time in the video. So, in this film, Eggsy is dating the Swedish princess, who he met in the last film. And having that in there is a really strange decision, to me at least. Like, at the end of the last film, the whole point of that was that it was a joke. The princess said, quote, If you save the world, we can do it in the asshole. And then they do. It was funny, but I do not believe that a true love relationship would come from that. And the thing is, it's not just some throwaway thing in the film. It takes up a large portion of the movie, and provides a lot of the story and conflict. And that was just crazy to me, because whenever a somewhat emotional scene came up to do with the princess, I remember that this all started as a joke at the end of the last film, and I was just kind of confused by how much of the actual film that plotline took up. I guess they wanted to have some kind of emotional connection for Eggsy, but this just didn't work at all for me. So before I get into spoilers, I'll just wrap this part up. Overall, I was entertained by Kingsman the Golden Circle. I had fun for most of it, but it is far from the first Kingsman, and there were some choices that were made here that kind of baffle me, and it just ends up feeling kind of exhausting. I'll give it a 6.9 out of 10. All right, now we'll get into the spoilers. If you haven't seen the film, click off from this video now. Y'all ain't never heard of knocking for you, Henry. Okay, so first of all, Harry coming back. I thought that had a kind of weird explanation. Like, I don't hate the idea of this super high-tech stuff, rebuilding cells or whatnot, but the thing is, you've now cured death in the Kingsman universe, which means next time anyone gets shot in the head, I won't feel anything, because I know they can just be brought back. I did really enjoy Harry in this though, especially towards the end. Speaking of which, there's the ending of the film, so I guess Eggsy is now the Prince of Sweden. I never thought I'd be saying that. Again, you know how I feel about the whole princess storyline in this. I personally just didn't buy it, so the fact that the big, happy ending finale is them getting married, I wasn't really on board for that. Also, is Channing Tatum joining Kingsman now? Alright. I mean, he didn't really get much to do in this anyway. Also, they very clearly were setting up another Kingsman film at the end of this, and the cast have talked about doing a trilogy for this, so would I go see Kingsman 3? Of course. Even if I was disappointed, I still like this movie, and I'd love to see more of these characters and this world. I guess we can talk about that weird semi-sex scene that wasn't really a sex scene? Look, it's very apparent that they were trying to one-up that sex scene from the first film, but it just felt so contrived in this. Like, the only way to get a tracker on this girl is to finger her. I mean, I guess that's the joke. Like, in classic spy movies, the hero usually has to sleep with a woman to get some information. But this... I don't know, it just felt very forced. I'm not a prude or anything. I thought that joke from the end of the first film was hilarious. This just wasn't that funny, or well done, or anything. Plus, like I said, I love that epic Kingsman music so much, and because I've heard it so many times, in a weird way, it kind of instills this sense of, like, happiness and awe in me, so to hear it playing all triumphantly over this scene, it just felt very weird. Like, imagine that epic main Star Wars theme playing over some kind of sex scene. That's how that felt to me. Finally, to wrap this up, as far as the deaths go, Merlin died. I'm honestly sad that he's gone, since he's one of my favorite parts of these films. But the actual scene, I quite liked it. It could have gotten really cringeworthy and awkward, but Mark Strong pulled it off really well. And now, for the thing that I kind of genuinely hated in this film. How Roxy and JB just die within the first, like, 10 minutes. And there are no real repercussions afterwards. Like, everything you've seen of Roxy in the trailers, that's pretty much all of her in the film. It's just like, oh, remember, Eggsy and Roxy were best friends, and now she's dead. And JB died too. And then there's like one scene where Eggsy's kind of upset, and then they just move on. It's almost kind of turned into a joke at one point. He brings it up later when he kills Charlie, sure, but it just felt so poorly handled. Like, all the development of Roxy and Eggsy's friendship in the first film feels so pointless now, because she's just gone. And that whole scene where Eggsy's about to shoot JB, that doesn't matter now, he just dies anyway. Like, maybe that was the point, it's an epic twist. And trust me, I have nothing against them killing characters from the first film. In fact, if you killed Roxy early on, that could have actually been great and emotional. But the way they did it here, I felt nothing. In fact, I was just kind of annoyed. It didn't do the first film justice at all in that sense. For me, that was just a total waste of what could have been a really emotional moment that could have also gotten us to hate the villain even more. Again, I felt really nothing except confusion and irritation when that happened. 
So, those are my thoughts on Kingsman The Golden Circle. What did you think of it? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson, check out this podcast about movies and TV and whatnot I do every other week with a friend of mine, it's called The Poorly Planned Podcast, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.